Hi everyone, I'm Miss Huss. I'm a first grade teacher at Thurgood Marshall Elementary School. I'm so excited to be here with you today and get to read more books with you today and discuss books. The last two times we were together, we read this book, The Big Blue Whale by Nicola Davies, illustrated by Nick Mayland. And we're gonna come back to this book and read a little bit more of the things that we skipped last time. So I want you to think about what new information are you learning? Uh, what are you wondering as I read these next parts of the book? So in the previous lessons, I skipped the words that were in the small handwritten print here. Uh, and I'm gonna go back and read that now. So this just has some extra, extra details and information so we can learn more about whales. So we're gonna go back, think about what new information you're learning. Blue whales can grow to 100 feet long and weigh 150 tons. That's heavier than 25 elephants or 115 giraffes. Female blue whales are a little bigger than the males. Oh, I didn't know that. In deep water, there isn't much light and it's hard to see. So blue whales use their sense of hearing and their sense of touch to find their way around. Blue whales can live for about 70 to 80 years. A blue whale can stay underwater for 30 minutes or more, but on long journeys, it usually surfaces for air every two to five minutes. A blue whale can have as many as 790 baleen plates in its mouth. Baleen is tough. Here's the baleen plates now here in this photo. Baleen is tough, bendy stuff, like extra hard fingernails. See the baleen there? A blue whale can have as many as 88 folds of skin in its throat. A blue whale can eat about 30 million krill just in one day. That's three big truckloads. Now you're going to have a chance to talk about what else have you learned about blue whales now? What new information did you get from the parts I just read? So if we were in the classroom, we would turn and talk to our turn and talk partner, but we're not. We're at our homes. So if you do have a person to talk to, great. Turn and talk to them about uh, what new information you learned about blue whales from what I just read. If you don't have someone to turn and talk to, like I don't, uh, go ahead and grab a toy or a stuffy or a doll that can be your turn and talk partner. So this is my turn and talk partner. So go grab something really quick and then come on back. you grab the turn and talk partner. Now you're going to turn and tell your partner something new you learned from what I just read to you. Okay, go. Okay, go ahead and turn back towards me. My partner and I discussed that blue whales can live for about 70 to 80 years. That was new information. If that's something that you said to your partner, go ahead and show me. And we also learned that there isn't much light and it's hard to see down deep, so they don't really use their eyes very much. They use their sense of hearing and touch to see what's around them. Right, so maybe that's what you said to your partner as well. Let's see what else we can learn as we keep reading. And we can also think about what we wonder. Is there anything else we wonder as we're reading? In summer, the blue whale grows a thick layer of fat all over its body. This fat is called blubber, and it's a food store for the winter when the whale eats very little. Some blue whales spend their summers 
around the South Pole and swim north to the equator for the winter. Others live around the North Pole and swim south for the winter. But when it's winter at the South Pole, it's summer at the North Pole. So the two groups of whales never meet. Male and female blue whales mate in winter and then part. Babies are born about a year later. A blue whale baby is 23 feet long at birth. It drinks more than 150 gallons of milk a day, sucking it from the teats tucked into its mother's belly. Adult blue whales make their hums in deep water. It's much colder than near the surface, which helps the hum to travel a long way. Right. So that's all the extra information in this book that we hadn't read yet. So I want you to stop and think about what new information did you learn from the parts that I just read? What else are you still wondering? Were any of your wonderings or things you thought about before, were those questions answered um, as we read today? So go ahead and think, what was something new you learned about blue whales today? Grab your partner and turn and tell your partner something new you learned today. Turn back towards me. Something my partner and I discussed, something new that we learned, that we didn't know, is they make, the blue whales make their hums in deep water, um, where it's colder, because then it'll, the sound will travel a longer way. Maybe that's what you were thinking too, something new that you learned. And I didn't know that uh, a blue whale baby is 23 feet long at birth. I'm only five feet seven inches tall. So when they're just first born, that's how big they are. That's pretty amazing. Wondering if you thought about that as well when you were thinking about new learnings. So now we're going to take a look at the what we wonder about, about blue whales. The last few times we were together, the last few lessons, we looked to see how many of some of these wonderings we had before we started reading and while we were reading, how many of those were answered? And now, then we added a few more things when we were done reading the whole book. We want to see if any of those questions were answered in our, when we read today. So, I wonder how long they can stay underwater. I believe that that question was answered in this book. Let's see. Oh, wait. I'm going to back up. I wonder how big blue whales are. So that was a question before that we had. I just noticed the answer here. It says blue whales can grow to 100 feet long and weigh 150 tons. So that question was answered. Now back to the how long can they stay underwater? Um, let's see. Oh, here we go. A blue whale can stay underwater for 30 minutes or more but on long journeys, they tend to come up for air every two to five minutes. So that question was answered. Uh, I wonder how much milk the babies drink. And I'm trying to remember if they tell us about that. Let's jump ahead to after the babies are born. Oh, it drinks more than 150 gallons of milk a day. Okay, so that question was answered. I wonder how old the babies are when they leave their moms. So it says on this page here that this is when the young whale is big enough to live on its own. There's no extra information, so the answer to that question is not in this book, how old the babies are when they leave. Uh, we still don't really know if blue whales are really blue. We haven't found the answer to that. And um, I wonder how long it takes a blue whale to feel full. Like how much curl do they actually 
have. So some of our questions here were answered in our nonfiction book and uh, some of our questions were not answered. Some of our things we were wondering. So what could we do now to find answers to these questions? We've talked about this before in previous lessons. See if you can remember. What could you do if you still want to know more? You want to find the answers to your questions. You want to think about it? Right, so thinking that many of you said you could read other books about whales. Absolutely, you could read other books, uh, find more nonfiction books. You could watch a TV show about whales. You could research on the internet. You could ask an expert, right? You could read a magazine about nature, about whales. So many ways to find out more information if you're still wondering things. So now we're done with this book. We've read it. I'm gonna grab my own nonfiction book from my house. If you have your own nonfiction book at your house, go ahead and grab it, grab one. Uh, if you don't, you can grab any book that you have at home because we can wonder and learn from any book. So this book is from National Geographic Kids. It's Little Kids First Big Book of Animals by Catherine D. Hughes. Okay, so this book is gonna tell us about lots of little animals and I'm gonna read parts of it today and when I'm done reading, I'm gonna do a journal entry about what I learned. So I wanna show you that now. Okay. So I'll read my book, and then I'm gonna write down a journal entry about the book you're reading. Please include the title of the book, what the book is about, and one thing you learned from the book. Okay. So, Little Kid's First Big Book of Animals. I'm gonna read a few pages to model this for you. Here's the table of contents. We talked about that as a text feature of nonfiction books. Here, these are grassland animals. Okay, cheetah. Cheetah cubs play games. A cheetah family wakes up early. The mother cheetah goes to hunt for food. Cheetah cubs climb on a tree. When a cheetah is up high, it can see far away. A cheetah's long tail helps it balance when it makes sharp turns. Cheetahs run faster than any other land animal, 65 miles an hour. That is as fast as a car drives on a highway. Cheetah cubs play games. They chase each other and pounce. Sometimes they pounce on top of each other. Let's see this. Cheetah comes from chitta, a word in the Hindu language that means spotted. Adult cheetahs can run very fast. Baby cheetahs practice running like their mother. The mother cheetah protects her cubs. She watches them play. When a cub gets tired, mom is there for snuggle time. Imagine six four-year-old kids lying in a line, head to feet. That is the distance that a running cheetah covers with each step. Okay, I'm gonna stop there because the next section is about zebras. So now I'm gonna write what I learn about my book. If you have this at home from your teacher, you're making meaning, student response book, you can get it out and you can write a journal entry in here. Or if you picked up the Seattle Public Schools packet, that has a journal entry page in there for you to write in, then you can write in there. If you don't have either of those things, that's totally fine. You can just take a piece of paper and write on your own piece of paper. All right. So don't forget, we're gonna include the title of the book, what the book is about, and one thing you learned from the book. So. I read the book, just to look at my books, Little Kid, oh, let's see. First Big Book of Animals. First Big Book, capital letters of animals. 
period. And then I'm going to underline the title of this book. So I did the title and now I'm going to say what the book is about. This book is about many kinds of animals. Period. I read about cheetahs. Period. All right, so now I need to write one thing that I learned from the book. I learned that cheetahs can run faster than a car. I talked about that they can run very, very fast. So I want to reread what I wrote to make sure it makes sense. I read the book, First Big Book of Animals. This book is about many kinds of animals. I read about cheetahs. I learned that cheetahs can run faster than a car. Now it's your turn. You're gonna go grab a nonfiction book if you have one, or any other book if you don't have nonfiction, and you are going to read it, and then you're going to make a journal entry um, with the title, what the book is about, and one thing you learned from the book. So enjoy your book and enjoy writing about your book. Don't forget, while you're reading, think about what are you learning? What are you wondering? All right, have fun. Thank you.